Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today I'm going to share with you something that is uh, over four and a half years in the making. I am, I am extremely excited to have this here in front of me. This, as you can tell by that little label right there, this is actually a uh, little Velcro thingy. This is going to be an SNG, but not an SNG like any other SNG that's ever been made. Uh, number one, this is a mixed writer custom. It is not a production SNG. Number two, it is a true one-off, and I'm going to tell you why it's a true one-off with a little story here in a minute. But a lot of people complain, oh, just get to the knife, get to the knife. Don't, don't, don't wait through five minutes of the story before you open it. Fine, let's get it open and get the knife out here before we start with the storytelling. And this is it right here. Uh, for those who don't know, quick identifier when you're just looking at pictures, if you see one, two, three uh, handle screws on this shape of knife, it's going to be an SNG. If it's one, two, three, and four, it will be an SMF, which is the larger variant of the same overall design. This is very exciting for me. There is a mixed signature right there. Because if you go back about four and a half years ago to the New York Custom Knife Show, I was running around buying up a whole bunch of stuff as I tended to do often in those days. And I walked over to uh, Dennis Farina's table and I saw a beautiful piece of Starfire Damascus sitting there. And I went, wow, at the time Starfire was really new, it was really, really hot, and everybody wanted it. It was kind of like... Um, just one of those things that just kind of hit and a lot of really great makers were using it and a lot of people loved it. It was a lot like Superconductor at the time. Superconductor was just massively popular for a short amount of time. Uh, it's fizzled lately. It's still great. It's still, you know, it's not like there's anything wrong with it. It's just not as popular as it once was. And same with the Starfire. You don't see it as often these days as you did back then. Well, I bought that piece of Starfire at Damascus and I stopped and I was standing with a buddy of mine and I kind of uh, looked across the room, the entire show from the front door there, and went, hmm, now who can I give this piece of Damascus to, to make me a really cool knife out of? And it hit me. I went, wouldn't it be amusing to hand a piece of Damascus to somebody that forges their own Damascus, that does not ever use anybody else's Damascus? I think it would be kind of neat to give it to somebody like that and have them make me a knife and that would guarantee me a one-off. The first name that popped in my head was Mick Strider so I ran right over to his table and I walked up and I handed him this little bar of steel and he looked at me with this, this very strange look on his face like what the hell are you doing handing me a piece of Damascus. I said I just picked this up and I would love for you to build me a custom with this steel. And He kind of looked at it and he, you could tell he was going to say no. He really wanted to say no. Like, dude, get the hell out of here. I'll make my own Damascus. You want a Damascus SNG or something, then I'll make it my, myself. But he stopped. And he looked at me. He goes, well, he goes, there's just enough room on this bar to make an SNG. You want an SNG? I'm like, hell yeah. So he agreed to do it. And I was completely blown away. And what we had discussed way back then, uh, this was right about the time, actually it may have been just before, but uh, I, what, I, what, what I wanted to do was uh, replicate the, the stealth look that he has done in the past. I wanted just all plain titanium, black DLC front and back, and then I wanted his laser engraved uh, skull and, and batwing logo on the obverse side, or on the reverse side. So that was kind of the plan. And then about a year goes by, and I haven't heard anything. So I just kind of sent him a little quick email. Hey, bud, how's it going? What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to it. We'll be getting to it. Don't worry about it. Everything's cool. Then I saw him at Blade Show the next year. He's like, dude, because I just haven't had time, and I've had this pop up and that pop up, but I'm going to get it done. No worries. And I'm the kind of collector that I, I don't really ever rush a maker because it's not worth it. I don't care if I've got to wait three, four, five years for a knife. It's not that big of a deal. I've got plenty of knives to keep me company. Fast forward another year, and <laughs> I, I see Marissa at the uh, Blade Show, 
is either the Blade Show or the other New York Custom Knife Show. And she goes, okay, funny story. Uh, Mick may or may not have lost your bar of steel. However, I found it for him, and I gave it back to him and reminded him that he had to get this build done. So I thought, okay, great. We're, we're in good shape now. This is going to be done soon. We're a couple years into it, but that's awesome. And then, you know, as things happen, you know, life happens. Life gets in the way, and other things are going on, and it never came to be. And then one day, out of the blue, this was about six months ago now, he says, hey, Jim, I just want to let you know I'm finally working on your knife. I'm cutting out the blade. We're going to do some cool stuff. I just want to verify with you what you wanted to have done. I said, honestly, the only thing I care about is that I get a nightmare grind, and, uh, and then we could still do that all-black look. I think that's going to look good with Starfire. And then about three weeks before the blade, about a month before the blade show here, 2018, messages me again. He goes, okay, he goes, I know we discussed a few different options, but I'm doing this really cool new finish, and I think that you might like it. Do you still want to do the all black? If so, let me know. It'll get sent out for DLC. And I said, you know what? I said, you know, I look at things differently now, now that I'm a knife maker, and I really enjoy when a customer says, you know what? Maker's choice. Do it however you think is going to look cool. You're going to come up with something better than I'm probably going to anyway. Just have fun with it. Because, yeah, the maker is going to have fun with it. You're going to end up with a better product. So I said, you know what? If if your, your new textured finish is the way you want to do it, um, do whatever you want, man. I'm just excited to be able to get it. And about a week or two before the Blade Show, he posted a picture. It was just a very simple picture of the knife laying down like that on his Instagram. And didn't really say anything on it, but had, uh, had my name in there, either tag me or hashtag me or something. And everybody was going apeshit just from seeing that picture. What you couldn't see were the colors in the uh, titanium. You could just see that it was an SNG with a Starfire, uh, Starfire Damascus blade in the, uh, in the Nightmare grind. And everybody went nuts like that. That little post there just went crazy. Everybody wanted one. And uh, I thought that was pretty amusing. So when I picked this up from him at Blade, was the first time I got a chance to see all of the colors that are in the textured titanium. It has very much the look of a hot hammered titanium frame. Just a little bit more color the way they've, uh, they've anodized it here to bring out the blues and the golds. Very, very slick. Uh, as he was telling me as I was picking it up from him on Friday morning, it was actually his son that did all the texture work on the frame and thought it would be an interesting idea to bring that texture into the flats on the blade, which I thought was another really cool touch as well. Now, instead of getting that really stark all black with bright silver streaks that you would normally get in the edge of, uh, of this particular Damascus. It's almost like a, a vintage kind of look, and I've really gotten to appreciate that uh, a lot more um, over the past couple of years. Anyway, it's kind of a, a vintage type of, uh, type of look to it. It's almost a little bit washed out, but you could definitely still see the pattern. Uh, it's still very clearly well etched. It's still very black. The carbon deposits are still in there very, very nicely. The whole thing is just wicked, and it's unlike anything that he's done before. Now, right now, he's offering quite a lot of knives uh, with this new uh, textured finish in the titanium, but at least we know this will be the only one in Starfire because I was the only one uh, just flat out silly enough to <laughs> hand somebody of mixed status somebody else's Damascus. But uh, I am forever indebted to him for taking on the project and for doing it. Um, he kind of felt bad about how long it took and I, it really wasn't a thing for me. You know, Of course I was anxious and, and, and I wanted to get it and everything and that's fine. But, you know, at no time did I say, oh, come on, man, this is getting ridiculous. It's been X amount of years now. What's going on? I was totally cool with it. So, you know, he was super nice about it and apologized and everything. And I was like, dude, it's this was so well worth the wait. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. I have makers I'm on their list for much, much longer. But he's like, yeah, he goes, but, you know, the whole intention was to kind of get it done fairly quickly. It wasn't like you signed up for a multi-year wait. So, you know, Mick's always been one of the coolest dudes I've ever known. 
always with a smile on his face, always with his hand outstretched to shake your hand, always willing to take pictures with his fans and uh, meet people. Because honestly, most of the time when he goes to Blade Show, he sells everything out in the pit on Thursday night. Maybe he has one or two knives on Friday morning, but by the time the show opens, they're all gone. And he spends the entire weekend there. He spends thousands of dollars to go to the show, literally to hang out with uh, collectors and customers and everything else. And that's just the kind of dude that he is. He's a lot of fun. He's a super nice guy. Uh, obviously extremely talented. And, I mean, this is a tried-and-true design. Everybody knows it. I don't really have to do a review on a Strider SNG. If you've never handled an SNG, I, I guess you're kind of living in a cave, if you call yourself a knife collector anyway. If you're new to knives, yeah, I get that. But, I mean, if you're a knife collector, you know about Striders. Love them or hate them. Doesn't matter. You know, everybody wants to put the whole production Strider versus, you know, Chris Reeves, Sabenzas, and all that. I never really fell into that camp. But uh, I've always liked Strider knives. I've always owned them, uh, whether it be productions or customs. I had a beautiful SMF, and everybody gives me hell because I never did a review on it. I just never felt the need because why rehash something that's been out there and talked about for years and years and years? This one uh, I felt was worthy of doing the review on because it's, it's not seen. Uh, it's a new finish for him. It's a whole new look. And this particular variation will never be seen, you know, in anybody else's collection. So I wanted to make sure I got it out here for people to see. Let's give you some nice close-up views on that beautiful blade. The killer, killer grind, really. You know what's funny? A lot of times, you know, a, a nicely etched Damascus pattern is going to hide any kind of complex grinds. And yet mixed grinds still find a way to uh to really shine and come through and they're very 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 evident there's the nice uh texture and color in the titanium frame there's his custom pivot nicely contoured this is the uh more of the the, the conceal carry uh version of his handles where it's contoured and smoothed and rounded out not the flat slab sided type of look, which again, that was one of the requests that I made. I wanted it to be the uh, the contoured handle. Just classic clip. Over travel for the lock bar. Blade stops are nicely polished. Nicely? Nicely? I turned into Sean Connery there for a second. They're nicely polished. Just beautifully done all the way around. Uh, sharp as a laser, ridiculously sharp. Uh, it's been a lot of fun owning and carrying this, and this is one that uh, quite obviously is not going to be leaving the collection for any reason, unless I am, you know, like two steps away from being homeless. So if you want to see me keep this knife in my collection, start buying some of my knives, all right? There. Uh, but no, this is, this is a definite, uh, definite lifelong keeper. Well worth the wait. Mick, thank you so much for taking on the uh, the project. I really appreciate it. I think it was damn cool of you to do. Anybody that's looking for a badass everyday carry knife, you already know the name Strider, whether you're looking at the production knives around that $400 to $600 price range, the uh, his, his performance series, which is more or less a production or mid-tech variation of his knives, which uh, can be a little bit more, but they're super slick and super cool. Or if you can find a way to get your hands on a custom, Monkey Edge is really always going to be your best bet. That is his preferred dealer. Um, I don't want to insult any other dealers are out there that, that may happen to carry his knives, but Monkey Edge is really where you're going to find. Um, not that there's a proliferation of his knives, but when there's going to be any number of his knives available, that's where it's going to be available over at MonkeyEdge.com. So definitely check them out. And... Uh, Hey, drop them an email and say, hey, you know what, I'm interested in an SMF or an SNG or whatever model it happens to be. And I don't know if they do notifications. I doubt they do. But, you know, it can't hurt to ask. So anyway, there it is, guys. There is my uh, Starfire Damascus SNG uh, Mixed Strider Custom. Very, very happy to own it and had a lot of fun presenting it here and sharing it with you guys.